Hello. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Joan Rosenhauer, the Executive Director of Jesuit Refugee Service USA. I'm so pleased to have you with us to recognize JRS's 41st anniversary. Though we were hopeful that we would be able to meet in person this year, we're grateful that we can still come together virtually to recognize the voices and talents of those we serve. Thank you for being a part of our mission and for joining us virtually to celebrate another year of walking together with refugees. The pandemic continues to change our lives and cause devastating loss. Numerous global crises, from our deteriorating climate to abrupt humanitarian emergencies in Afghanistan and Myanmar, have broken our hearts and called us to do more. In our 41st year, we heard this call and put even more into fulfilling our mission to accompany those who've been forced to flee their homes. 
We have supported programs around the world to continue to educate refugee students, find pathways to sustainable and dignified income and work, reconcile issues of violence and tragedy, and ease the suffering that forcible displacement causes. Our colleagues have visited refugees in their homes, provided them with support and worked diligently to ensure their voices are heard. As our hearts went out to the people fleeing Afghanistan, JRS geared up to facilitate their travel, to help them cope with their stress, and to help them settle into new homes around the world, including in the U.S. One of the things I'm most proud of is our response here at home. In April, alongside our colleagues from JRS Mexico and Jesuit Migration Services Mexico, we launched a new program, Caminar Contigo, to respond to the needs for legal as well as mental health and psychosocial support at our southern border. The need is great. Thousands of people are still waiting for their chance at safety and security in the United States. I had a chance to visit the program and spend some time with those who are trying to seek asylum in the United States. In a sprawling shelter near the U.S. border in Mexico, I met Gloria, a 33-year-old woman from Central America. She comes from a family of coffee growers, and members of her family were chased down and some were killed by a criminal gang because they would not submit to extortion. Fearing more retribution and with few options for protection, she fled to the United States. After being deported, she is now awaiting her moment for legal processing into the country. Her courage and strength are a powerful testament to her will to reunite with family already here and build a new life free of threats and violence. In Fratelli Tutti, Pope Francis's latest encyclical, he calls us all to commit to love our brothers and sisters around the world. He urges us to ensure that this love reaches beyond borders and geography to people like Gloria. It is a love that begins with our families and communities and extends to those of different cultures, religions, backgrounds across the globe. Ultimately, it is a love that spreads our welcome and compassion to those in need wherever they may be. We extend our love as we continue to accompany, serve, and advocate for forcibly displaced people. And we hope the voices and stories you hear tonight will help you extend your love too. My name is Talal Murad, I'm a Yazidi. Yazidis is a peaceful religious ethnic minority with a history of 6,000 years. I am 33 years old. I have lived through two genocides. The last one was on the hands of the ISIS. On the 3rd of August 2014, we heard that the ISIS attacking southern areas of Sinjar Mountain. We heard the things we saw the ISIS members on the way. I could remember the screaming of my mom, screaming of my sisters that they were saying they will come to kidnap us. In that day, the ISIS did many crimes against the Yazidi people. They killed around 1,290 persons. They kidnapped more than 6,400 people, most of them children and women. But thank God we could be able to flee out to Kurdistan in that day. And seven years later, me and my family, we are living here. <laughs> There is no efforts from the government to find a safe ground or dignified ways for the people to return to their areas. As a Yazidi young, I found that it is my duty to stand with my community and advocate on their rights. I am a protection and education director at JRS Sharia here in Kurdistan, Iraq. The JRS mission is to accompany, serve and advocate for the people. 
we are going to the old village around Sharia. Each month we have 100 food basket and hygiene kits to provide to the 100 families here in Sharia Collective and seven villages around. It's very important to be close to those families, to accompany them, to give them hope that there is some organization, some people are caring about them and trying to provide their needs. The people that the JR is currently servicing, more than 20,000 people. The purpose of the project that we have here in Sharia to provide the education services, protection and mental health, psychosocial support for the people and also looking for the justice for their rights. <laughs> We provide him cash assistance in terms of mental health. We are providing the medication. We providing them with the legal services. We are providing the transportation for the student in education. We have a kindergarten to receiving 220 children per year. We have a youth education program for the student of the grade nine and grade 12. And also we have the adult education courses, which is English and literacy and computer. Besides that, we have skills training courses in terms of sewing, barbering, confectionery and hairdressing courses. Through the JRS advocacy work, we selected the issues of Yazidi missing persons to have interventions and raise this issue to the international community. We also bring attention to the situation of Christian Yazidis. And For the Yazidis, I hope that this year will be the last year of the displacement and hopefully those people will return to their home in a safe and dignified way. They deserve peaceful, they deserve a good life, they deserve a life like others. I tried and I am still trying to be a voice of my community. I think it's very important missions that the JRS has here in Iraq and around the world to give the people hope to make them stand for their own future. Good evening, everyone. It's great to see you all again. My name is Father Jim Martin. I'm a Jesuit priest and editor at large of America Magazine in New York City. Over the years, beginning with my time with Je Jesuit Refugee Service between 1992 and 1994 in Nairobi, Kenya, and continuing today, I've walked with and encouraged others to walk with refugees. One way to accompany those forced to flee their homes is to provide hope for their future through their ability to care for themselves and for their families. For JRS, improving livelihood opportunities is more than economic self-sufficiency. It is also about dignity, restoring confidence and hope, while promoting integration into the local community and strengthening social cohesion. JRS, as you may know, bases its livelihood programs on local labor market assessments to assure that we prepare displaced peoples for jobs and business skills that lead to income for their families. I've been fortunate enough, blessed enough, to experience these livelihood programs in Kenya when I worked with fellow Jesuits, lay people, and refugees themselves in Nairobi. And of all the ministries I've ever done in my life as a Jesuit, this is the one that changed me and moved me the most. What we did and what is still going on in Nairobi at the Mikono Center, which I helped to found with a woman named Uta Fager, is that refugees from all over East Africa are given help to start their own small businesses to support themselves and their families. Many of these businesses are handicrafts, like batiks and uh, weavings and cards, and today Mikono markets them all over the world. I often tell people that if and when I get to heaven, and God asked me what I did during my time on earth, I'm not going to say that I wrote this or that book. I'm going to say I worked with refugees. You just heard from Talal. You heard his story from Iraq and how JRS is serving more than 20,000 people and providing educational courses and skill training for jobs. 
Later this evening, you will hear from Gahizi and her remarkable story about the impact the JRS Digital Inclusion Program has had on her life in Malawi. Both of these extraordinary people have received JRS education and livelihood training because of your support, so thank you so much. Across 57 countries today, JRS's care for displaced persons is a crucial response of compassion to the global refugee crisis. At this moment, more than 82 million people globally, 82 million, remain without a safe and secure home. Just think of how difficult that would be for you and your family. Yet we have seen policy and language at the highest levels that casts our brothers and sisters as not only strangers, but as enemies. They are not. In JRS, we find programs, ideas, and above all people to com committed to protecting dignity and restoring welcome for the world's most vulnerable people. Heeding the words of Pope Francis during this past World Day of Migrants and Refugees, we must continually strive towards an ever wider we. Quote, the Catholic faithful, he said, are called to work together each in the midst of his or her own community to make the church become ever more inclusive, end quote. And heeding the words of Jesus, we must try our best to reach out to anyone who is seen as the stranger, but who we know to be our brothers and sisters. And so let us pray. Holy beloved Father, your son Jesus taught us that there is great rejoicing in heaven whenever someone lost is found whenever someone excluded, rejected, or discarded is gathered into our we, which thus becomes ever wider. We ask you to grant the followers of Jesus and all people of goodwill the grace to do your will on earth. Bless each act of welcome and outreach that draws those in exile into the we of community and of the church, so that our earth may truly become what you yourself created it to be, the common home of all of our brothers and sisters. Amen. God bless you and thank you for all your support of JRS. I've been so fortunate to visit and spend time in the country where our next guest now lives, Chad, in North Central Africa. A nation in which JRS has supported education, child protection, and advocacy programs for over 15 years. I'm delighted to introduce you to Seema, a young dreamer educated by JRS who is following her heart through the power of music. نبني عشنا بالغناوي وننصر الأفراح درر والربيع يسكن جوارنا والسنابل تبقى دارنا والرواحيل والمطر والله نحنا مع الطيور الما بتعريف لها قرطة الحبيبة تغني لينا الحبيبة تغني لينا الحبيبة تغني لينا لا حبوم تسكيب دربنا الحبيبة تغني لينا لا حبيبة تغني لينا لا حبوم تسكيب دربنا ولا بلاقي الغطر ولا بلاقينا الغطر لو بقينا مع الطيور الما بالتعريف ليها خرطة ولا باكر يا حليوة لما عولاتنا السمر يبقى عفراحنا اللي بنمزح بها أحزان الزمن That was beautiful. Thank you. Dreamers like Seema, especially refugee women and girls, must often work harder and longer to access opportunities to study, learn, and earn. Over 2,000 miles to the south of Chad, 
The JRS Digital Inclusion Program in Malawi is changing that reality. With an emphasis on building in-demand digital skills, participants gain the technical knowledge to support themselves, their families, and their greater communities. In her own words, Gahizi, a refugee from the Democratic Republic of Congo, shares her journey through our program. Where I come from in the Congo, it's very common for tribes to have issues and attack each other. I was young, 13 years. That day we were playing outside. We saw soldiers coming. Then we had a bullet. The soldiers came to our home and killed my parents. And then they also burnt the house. That's when I ran with my sister. I can't say I had hope. Yeah, I just moved. <laughs> now we are refugees here in Malawi. I heard about GRS when I first arrived in this camp. I heard that they do different courses here, including English, computer, mental health program, education, basic skills, and other courses. I saw people talking about the digital inclusion program, saying how I could make my own money and become my own boss. I was like, oh, I love that. I joined. I think it's important everyone has education to make use of their lives. In the digital inclusion program, I went deep in Excel, Word, or those Microsoft Office tools. I also learned communication skills, management skills, and the translation skills. That same day I finished, that same day I got a job. life changed completely. Mostly clients offer me translation and interpretations and voiceover work. The one I enjoy mostly is to interpret for refugees who are abroad. What are the things that you have to do to show the client that you have understood? You find them having different stories and that one really gives you courage. I'm trying to find out. When I started working, we got all the to dream to. I'm able to support my sister and myself and I really enjoy my work. With all the skills that I learned, I got a part-time job now. I work in a supermarket to generate more income. It doesn't mean I have everything, but I share what I have. Because I met some few good people in this world that helped me along the way. When I see people in need of anything, let's say, uh, if but they don't have food, I always share with them. If they're sick, I always help them to get to the clinic or buy for them medication. I also teach others what I know so that they can be independent. JRS has changed many people's lives, including my life too. In this camp, it's over 50,000 people. GRS programs are encouraging for this generation to have a future. Actually, I think here, we're gonna have future presidents, future ministers, future doctors, engineers, you know? So I think they're doing a great thing. I've learned a lot from them. I can now, uh, make a life. My dream is to be a woman who inspires and encourages others. That's all. Now I feel confident 
I'm empowered and uh, I have the hope for the future. Gahizi's journey inspires us all to embrace opportunities to learn, grow, and in turn, enrich our own communities. Yet millions around the world today still yearn for those kinds of chances. This past summer, we watched in real time the harrowing collapse of the Afghan national government and the Taliban's sudden rise to power once again. Years of educational growth and expanded rights for women and girls were suddenly cast away. Still, tonight, Millions of Afghans in the country and those resettling around the world deserve our steadfast support. To read a poem from one Afghan refugee, please welcome acclaimed author and friend of JRS USA, Maria Shriver. It's an honor for me to be invited uh, to honor you, to honor your work to tell you what a difference it makes. And as someone educated by the Jesuits, I so believe in the work that the Jesuits do around the world. And I so believe in their philosophy. And I so believe uh, that their mission is what the world reads right now. And Joan asked me to read this poem. And in this poem, a young refugee shares the joys of her past, the sorrows of her present, and the uncertainty of her future a testimony of the suffering and the resilience of all the women in Afghanistan. And it goes like this. I wish to go back to the past, to the nights when I could sleep peacefully, to the days when I could go out without any fear and enjoy my life, to the days when I woke up and went to the closet of my dress. Which dress should I wear at work today, I wondered, to the days that last day of the month when I went to the bank, took my hard-earned money, went to the market and bought whatever I wanted. To the days when I was proud of being a woman, I walked all over my city without any restrictions because of being a woman. To the days when I was leaving the house, I would see my three color flag all over the city and I would feel good to see it. To the days when I lived with passion, I hoped for the future. I wish the bright day would come tomorrow after dark night as before, but this dark night has not ended for a month. My God, I do not say blasphemy, but you owe us a world of happiness. Maybe everyone is thinking of moving towards the future, but I wish I could go back to the past. In this time, I want to say thank you to some of the people for showing humanity, but also I have a lots of complaints for dot, dot, dot. Well, no words can explain the pain of my broken heart. Um, so the Jesuits uh, remain committed to accompanying the most vulnerable and the Jesuit refugee service is in that work. And I wanna commend them, congratulate them on their anniversary and thank them for letting me read uh, this poem by an unknown woman, but her words will stay known in my heart. Good luck. Thank you, Maria. We're so grateful for your continued support of the Jesuits and the JRS mission worldwide. Our next guest this evening is a very familiar face to many across the organization. His warmth, wisdom, and unending commitment to serving displaced persons embodies Pope Francis's call for an ever wider we. Please welcome the former president of Georgetown University and JRS's director of mission, and my friend and Jesuit brother, Father Leo O'Donovan. Thank you for joining us to walk with refugees. It is deeply encouraging for us and for Jesuit Refugee Service colleagues in 55 countries across the world to know how many of you care as we do for the 82.4 million refugees and internally displaced persons who need us, alas, more and more. Yes, the need is indeed increasing, and not least for the children, who now make up 42% of the refugee population. The children, 
bright-eyed, resilient, the future of our planet, the creative heart of God's providence for a more human and divine cosmos, a kingdom to come of justice and peace, harmony and concord. Did you notice, as I did, how over the last 30 minutes, certain chords in our hearts have been rung? Do you too feel a new resonance to home, hope, humanity? Do you too feel what Pascal called the grandeur and the misery of humankind, so shallow, but at once so deep, so distracted and yet so awake, so closed in on ourselves, but nevertheless free. Yes, free to share life with millions of women and men and children whom we may never meet in person, but who are, our hearts assure us, our refugees. Please continue to help Jesuit Refugee Service in giving of our hearts to God's own heart, pulsing in the least but infinitely precious of the holy mystery of love's very children. I feel inspired seeing Leo's faithful support for refugees, and I'm delighted to have shared this evening with you. We have come together in celebration and honor of our displaced brothers and sisters. We know that today and every day our work is carried on around the world and our mission is carried on because of you and your financial support. Please continue to walk with us into a more loving world for displaced people. Your donation today has a direct impact on those we serve tomorrow. Thank you for your support. <laughs>